Thanks to tier one, Ricky McKnight. Is this about the declassified UFO footage that the government released last year? In early 2007, this silent black and white video was uploaded by a user on a conspiracy and cool. UFO-centric forum called Above Top Secret. The user claimed the video depicted a disc-shaped UFO outmaneuvering a fighter jet somewhere off the coast of Mexico in the mid-2000s. They had supposedly gained access to the video while serving on board a US aircraft carrier and claimed to have smuggled a potentially classified material. Hold on real quick, I want to send this to my dad. My dad loves, loves, loves UFO shit. Give me one second to send it to him. Okay, there we go. Thanks for the resub, Matt. Off the ship. While some members of the forum chose to believe their story, others Thanks were not so real easily Ian. convinced. For instance, the video was hosted on a website belonging to a group of German film students, which led some to denounce the clip as an attempted hoax. Even yeah, those who believed it could be genuine still complained that it was a totally uninspiring video of a fuzzy dot. Thanks to Resub David. Over a decade later, this long forgotten video suddenly resurfaced as part of an article by the New York Times. The video was now linked to a secret government funded program and was even corroborated by a credible What had initially been dismissed as a hoax turned out to be real. The video was said to depict a genuine encounter between US Navy fighter jets and some sort of unidentified craft. I just wish the video was better because the video itself is pretty underwhelming. Video of a similar yet completely separate incident was also featured at the beginning of the article, except this one had sound. Dude, this is drawn, bro. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. These two videos, along with a third released a few months later, spread across the this internet like wildfire. Neil? Comment sections and Appreciate discussion it, threads were dominated by unrestrained speculation about aliens and paranormal phenomena. The skeptics, meanwhile, took it upon themselves to analyze every pixel in every frame in the hopes of uncovering some. It does look fucking weird. That could identify these fuzzy blocks. It's like a Beyblade. Any lingering doubts vertically. about the video's authenticity vanished with the release of an official statement by the Department of Defense confirming that the videos depicted real events involving unidentified aerial phenomena. So, what exactly are we looking at? Here's the recent Chilla Wisp. I'm super sorry to hear that taken while well, I'm wishing her and your family the best, man. Good luck. The first video was recorded off the northwestern coast of Mexico in late 2004. The story behind it has been recounted by more than a dozen naval officers, and it goes like this. 150 knots crosswind can make a plane go backwards. A naval strike group led wow. by the aircraft carrier, the USS Nimitz, was conducting pre-deployment exercises about 100 kilometers southwest of San Diego. Starting around the 10th of November, radar technicians aboard a guided missile cruiser, the USS Princeton, were puzzled by a series of unidentified radar tracks near San Clemente Island. Thanks to the resub official. The tracks did not resemble any known aircraft and would sporadically appear in groups of 5 to 10 at a time. Suspecting a malfunction of some sort, the recently upgraded Spy-1 radar system was taken offline and recalibrated. Once the system was brought back online, however, the tracks had only become sharper. Among those on board were Senior Chief Operations Specialist Kevin Day, who hey, was Kevin. an expert on the Spy-1 radar system and had 18 years worth Every of Every ship should have like an alien the conspiracy incident. theorist on Day it. Day observed firsthand how these unknown targets alternated between slightly strange and physics-defying maneuvers. Sometimes a cluster of tracks would appear out of nowhere and slowly drift south. They were flying too high to be birds, too slow to be conventional aircraft, and did not follow any commercial airways. 
Other times, they would seemingly descend from space and drop all the way down to sea level in mere seconds. Wow! These phenomena continued for several days, and every time they reappeared, the crew would run up to the bridge Is and use a crime? pair of heavily magnified binoculars to see these tiny like a bird moving erratically. <laughs> yeah, in the like a bird. On the morning of November the 14th, the crew on board the USS Nimitz were gearing up for a scheduled air defense exercise. They had not yet been informed of the unusual returns picked up by the Princeton. It was a cloudless day and the sea was calm as pilots took to the skies. Thanks for Prime Midnight. One of them was Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Kurth, who was up, flying Doug? a single-seat F-A-18 fighter jet when he was contacted by the Princeton. Thanks for Prime he Min. was instructed to investigate an unknown target approaching from the south. The Princeton also wanted to know if he carried any weapons, to which the answer was no. Kurth made his way to the specified coordinates, but did not pick up anything on sensors. As he looked down towards the ocean, however, his attention was immediately drawn towards a turbulent patch of water. Kurth claims to have seen a roundish disturbance on the ocean, which appeared as though something was submerged just below the surface. It reminded him of a submarine or ship slowly sinking into the ocean. The Nimitz strike group did include a nuclear-powered submarine named the USS Louisville. The Louisville was in the vicinity when Kurth made his observations, so the churning may indeed have been caused by a submerging submarine. That if not, makes sense. If not, then whatever was in the water but what if it was to evade attention by the Louisville's extremely sensitive sonar. Kurth was soon joined by a squadron of two tandem seats in F-18s the lead aircraft of which was piloted by Commander David Fravor. Much like Kurth, Fravor claims to have seen a disturbance on the ocean, which he described as having a vaguely cross-like shape. He thought it resembled a downed airliner. <laughs> it was Jesus Christ and his space vessel. Than a submarine. While Kurth eventually circled back for the Nimitz, Fravor and his wingman decided Then to all of a sudden they looked on their lap and there was a piece of toast their descent, with a beard a white and long hair. shaped craft moving erratically above the disturbance. At first, they thought it could be a helicopter, but there were no rotor blades. In fact, it was perfectly smooth. No markings, no exhaust, no protrusions of any kind. The UFO appeared to maintain a consistent altitude, but made rapid lateral movements with no visible means of propulsion. According to Fravor, it was a bit smaller than an F-18 and resembled a giant mint of Tic Tac. What? As Fravor continued to descend, his wingman They're flying around, around in birth control pills in space? Above. Flying in a spiraling downward motion, Fravor was getting closer and closer, until suddenly, the UFO realigned its axis and began to climb at an incredible rate of speed. Both of them were now flying in a circle. The UFO was coming up, while the F-18 was going down. In an effort to close the distance between them, Fravor made a final aggressive turn before the UFO rapidly accelerated up to a hypersonic speed and disappeared in a matter of seconds. Why don't As planes have a fucking ocean, video camera on them? Perfectly calm. It'd be so much easier to verify these things okay, if the fucking pilot just had a goddamn now, iPhone so attached Fraver to it somewhere. And his wingman made it back to the Nimitz. They landed and ran into a different flight crew preparing to head back out. They told them what they, they had do. Seen then why wasn't it turned on? Anything out of the ordinary. Soon thereafter, another tandem-seated F-18 Thanks for Prime, random the stuff in the resub Owen and this Dime. This time, it was outfitted with an advanced, targeting, forward-looking infrared camera system. This Atlear pod is controlled Thanks by the, the weapon systems operator seated behind the pilot, and the backseater of this flight was Lieutenant Chad Underwood. A few minutes after departing the Nimitz, Underwood detected something on his radar. The unknown target was directly ahead, a few tens of kilometers. It's on that fucking the behavior infrared camera or whatever, and it looks like shit. The AC-130 cam looks like flux. shit. According to Underwood, it simply did not abide by the known laws of physics. At some point, Underwood managed to get a lock on the target with the Atflare camera, and this is when the much-publicized video was recorded. See, like, it looks like dog video, shit. We see a UFO being tracked in infrared. Just show me a switches to fucking visible light, clear video. Revealing an out-of-focus, rounded mass in the distance. He then switches back to infrared and alternates between two different zoom levels on multiple occasions. Not much happens until the very end of the video, when the UFO suddenly disappears off to the left-hand side of the screen. 
As the target was too far away to be seen with a naked eye, neither Underwood nor his pilot ever made visual contact. The Princeton continued to detect anomalous radar tracks for at least two more days, and according to Senior Chief Day, Prime, they eventually disappeared near the Mexican island of Guadalupe. Hold on, I need some water. I love this shit though. I've always had a big fascination with UFOs and aliens and all that. I'll be right back. And thanks to the Prime Big Nut. Oh shit. Thanks to the Prime. In Lucid. complete isolation, utterly divorced from any and all surrounding context, this video is extraordinarily unremarkable. Agreed. It's a fuzzy blob against a featureless background. It's only when you place it in the middle of these truly remarkable stories that the video itself becomes remarkable. When skeptics and debunkers claim that this is a distant a airplane, odd. I understand why many are so opposed to that explanation, because the witness accounts say otherwise. A distant airplane can't just zip around the sky as if gravity was non-existent. It doesn't make any sense. Unfortunately, we don't see any of those physics-defying maneuvers in the video. In fact, this fuzzy blob does not do much of anything until the very end, when it suddenly disappears off to the left-hand side of the screen. Yeah, it doesn't now, even disappear fast. Claim this is due to a sudden acceleration by the UFO, but it could also be something as simple as the camera losing its target lock. It's difficult oh, to tell. True. Thanks to Reese Hobla and Soup. is uncertain about what happens at the end, as he never made visual. That'd be contact. cool looking. The witness accounts, meanwhile, are so extraordinary they are difficult to believe. If any regular person claimed to have seen a tic-tac-shaped UFO moving erratically in the sky, a few would listen. But when that same story is told by some of the most qualified observers on the planet, it makes you wonder. And it wasn't just one or two. These UFOs were either seen or tracked by dozens of experienced aviators and sailors for nearly a week. They were seen from multiple vantage points and tracked by one of the most sophisticated radar systems in the world. To think that all of them are lying or all of them were deceived by some prosaic phenomena seems absurd. At the same time, there is no way to verify what they're saying. We have no choice but to take them at their word. Mm -hmm. We don't have mm -hmm. the radar data, the radio communication logs, nor any corroborating evidence. Well, except for this pixel deficient footage, I guess. Some of the witnesses claim there was actually a much longer and much higher resolution video than the one we see today. They claim to have seen this video on board the Princeton and that the shape of the UFO was perfectly clear as it violently maneuvered around the screen. What's interesting about this claim is that when the video was first leaked online back in 2007, the anonymous leaker claimed they had four different versions of the video in their possession. Two of them were said to be shorter, but the fourth was said to be twice as long and supposedly showed more UFO movement. Unfortunately, this extended version has never seen the light of day. Until and now! The witnesses are to be I'll release it, it if we get 200k will. viewers see, right now. on the now. evening of November the 14th, all the footage and data from these events were supposedly erased. Witnesses claimed that two men arrived via helicopter who then collected the relevant data before having all the tapes and hard drives wiped clean. Witnesses from both the Nimitz and Princeton. Do you think if there was the visit alien visits, insist that nothing like it had it ever really wouldn't before. leak? This has understandably led find speculations that hard to believe. of some sort like of leak. that these sightings were that of top secret military drones or aircraft. While the US military is undoubtedly experimenting with all kinds of cutting edge technology, it is difficult to believe they possess gravity defying hypersonic flying tic tacs. If so, they would possess technology so far beyond anything known to the public, it would be akin to magic. And this was back in 2004. It has leaked, don't we just don't wrong. believe 2004 it. Was a no, 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 I don't, I, I don't think that's... Yeah. But don't it was still it. aggressively 2004. Flatball! From a disc to a ball right before your eyes. Catch it, flatten it, and let it fly! Flatball! Flatball really was pretty cool. I don't know what to make of this story. After reading, watching, and listening to so many interviews with the people who were there, I'm left with a distinct impression that they're telling the truth. The video, on the other hand, does little to support their claims. Sure, this fuzzy blob may so be crusty. unidentified, but it's not unexplainable.
Do people really think if aliens exist, they can travel at light speed? They don't have the technology to the not be seen. The second and third videos were recorded off the southeastern no coast idea. of the United States in early 2015. It's not exactly While the same thing. Visibility and speed forward, don't go hand in some hand. Some of their crewmates and fellow pilots have, and according to them, the story goes like this. In the summer of 2014, a naval strike group led by the aircraft carrier the USS Theodore Roosevelt was conducting pre-deployment exercises somewhere off the coast of Virginia. Much like with the Nimitz encounters, the first sign of trouble came in the form of anomalous radar tracks. Following a fleet-wide upgrade of aircraft radar systems, pilots had begun to pick up unidentified targets while Thanks conducting routine Aiden. training missions. Doesn't the universe expand faster than the speed of light? I see a lot of people again spamming that it's impossible to travel faster, which I mean, obviously a current understanding would say so, yeah. But doesn't the universe expand faster than the speed of light or does it expand at the speed of light? Let's see. Oops. Okay, not super helpful. Let's ask this a little better. Okay, so the universe expands faster than the speed of light, but nothing in it does. So what the fuck? How does... It's such a baffling concept. Very interesting. So how the fuck can the universe go faster than the speed of light with its expansion, but the things that are left in it aren't traveling at that speed? Yeah, if only Yahoo Answers could solve this for me. Crazy. Exit tier one, the tracks Amelia. were initially dismissed as false positives, but their behavior was unlike anything they had seen before. True, bro. Gravity-defying maneuvers, hypersonic velocities, and other mystifying shenanigans. Attempts to intercept mm. these UFOs were initially unsuccessful. Lieutenant Danny Acoin claims that on two separate occasions he tried, but failed to make visual contact. Then, one day, a squadron is said to have narrowly avoided a mid-air collision with one of these UFOs. The two jets had been flying in tandem, no more than a few tens of meters apart, when something flew right in between them. What was that, the that box something ghost? something was oddly described as a cube encased by a translucent sphere. What? <laughs> Lieutenant Ryan Graves, who spoke to one of the pilots once they had landed, claims the experience had visibly spooked them. So much Thanks so, the Samuel. squadron filed an official safety report. According to Graves, this was far from an isolated incident. These UFOs were allegedly seen by dozens of pilots for several months and could remain airborne for up to 12 hours at a time. Yet, despite growing concerns among the Roosevelt crew, training missions continued as if nothing was amiss. By early 2015, the Roosevelt strike group had made its way down to the coast of Florida, which is when the two now famous videos were recorded, both of which are said to be short clips taken from much longer and higher resolution footage. We don't know much about the circumstances as the officers involved have So this happened near silent, Florida? But are we sure it wasn't just like a meth addict who made a homemade plane and all the jerky movements are him crashing? There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 miles to the west. Look at that thing, dude. That's not around us, though, is it? It's not. It is around us, dude. Well, if there's like another thing, it's rotating. So, there are a few things to unpack in this one. If we ignore the audio for a moment and focus solely on the visuals, the thing that immediately stands out is the apparent rotation of the UFO. Yeah, that's pretty I cool. I use the word apparent because some debunkers claim that this rotation is an optical illusion. Fuck. You see, the Atflir is real. equipped with something known as a derotation mechanism. 
It's meant to counteract the rotation of the camera so that the orientation of the image stays the same, also known as image stabilization. What may not be stabilized, however, are certain artifacts produced by the lens of the camera. You can even try this yourself. Aim a camera towards a light source, rotate the camera, stabilize the footage, and there you go. The orientation of the image is preserved while these spokes of light rotate along with the camera. So much like how the light from this light bulb is producing a lens flare, the infrared radiation from this UFO is said to be producing a lens glare. In other words, the bunkers claim it is the camera and thereby the glare which is rotating, not the UFO itself. Well, this explanation you ruined Christmas then. Fuck you, I, I thought that eyes, was cool. Things get a bit more confusing once we bring back the audio. Well, if there's like a thing, it's rotating. If this rotation is merely the result the of prime, image stabilization, Hoku, why the would the resub pilots fail to recognize it as the such? Fran, Surely the they, if Faku. anyone, would know what that looks like. And they're not alone. Both Lieutenant Graves and Akoin believe it is the UFO which is rotating. Furthermore, an expert on the Atflare system has very plainly stated that this is not an optical illusion. But this is not the only puzzling comment made by the two pilots. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. So the radar is supposedly detecting a whole fleet of UFOs, which are all traveling crosswind. I mean, if what Can't we're look looking at is something Fanta. prosaic, like the blooming exhaust of a jet engine, these comments don't make a whole lot of sense. I would love to hear what these two pilots have to say if they ever decide to come forward. Until then, all we can do is speculate. Thanks for the five gift subs again, Cyaxis. Appreciate the generosity. That's definitely a kid who just got his superpowers. That's like the first thing anyone that could fly would do. Interesting of the three. Once again, let's ignore the audio for a moment and focus solely on the visuals. Unlike the previous two, the UFO in this one is colder than its surroundings, so the ocean below is radiating more heat than whatever this is. It may look as though the UFO is traveling at high speed, but this is likely the result of parallax. In short, aircraft go fast, Danny. The camera prime fixed slick. on not so fast UFO, UFO appear to go fast. Interesting, Naruto. Some say the UFO is near sea level and therefore the parallax explanation doesn't work, but we can actually derive its altitude using the numbers on screen and find that that is not true. Everything seen in this video is consistent with a balloon or some sort of debris floating in the wind. The commentary by the pilots, however, does once again introduce a bit of confusion. I mean, it seems odd for the pilots to be so excited over something so mundane, but without hearing from the pilots themselves... Maybe the pilots are just fucking dumb. <laughs> like, you know, it's totally possible. We can fly a plane, but we're also kind of fucking dumb. We don't know what it looks like when a grocery bag gets picked up by a strong wind. You know, it's, I can't rule it out. The person responsible for making these videos available to the public is a man named Lou Elizondo. Beginning in 2008, Elizondo was the head of a secret government-funded effort to investigate UFO sightings known as the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. By late 2017, however, Elizondo had grown so disillusioned with the government's lack of interest in the program's efforts that he decided to resign. In his resignation letter, Elizondo writes that certain individuals within the government are staunchly opposed to UFO research, that inflexible mindsets and political contention essentially prevented him from doing his job. He portrays the government as virtually unconcerned about an issue which he believes could pose a threat to national security, so much so that he felt it necessary to resign in protest. 
This seemingly uncaring attitude was also noted by witnesses of both the Nimitz and Roosevelt encounters. Once we were in instance, the road Lieutenant and saw Ryan a diaper Graves flying in the air, the must have been that, just didn't group stop flying. Completely unfazed you cracked by this it. Video. It's probably what it was. On the day when it was captured, he supposedly looked at it for five seconds, then walked away without saying a word. Some of the senior officers on board the Nimitz and Princeton are said to have had an equally muted response. These are very bizarre reactions to potential airspace incursions. You'd think they'd want to make sure these UFOs are not some kind of threat. The near mid-air collision reported by one of the oh, squadrons probably from Roosevelt yeah. seems especially concerning. To Not really concerning, it was just it had a mission. Interest, many point to the severe stigma surrounding the topic of UFOs. Regardless of how inaccurate it may be, the term UFO has for many become synonymous with aliens. God and damn spaceships. right. So you much bet so, your sweet the ass. now favors the term UAP specifically to avoid this unwanted association. Whether sightings go unreported or uninvestigated, the argument is that people choose to look the other way because they're concerned about their reputation. No one wants to be seen as a nutcase and potentially lose out on a promotion. Makes it a bit ash Others way. believe there could be something a bit more conniving at play, that no serious action is taken because a highly advanced and top secret drone program rental. is responsible for the sightings. Even some of the witnesses have entertained that possibility. For instance, Sean Cahill, who was the chief master at arms on board the Princeton, perceived the inaction of senior staff as a clear sign that the UFOs were known military assets. But as previously mentioned, it is difficult to believe such radical innovation could have taken place in absolute secrecy. We're talking about such advanced technology that so, would Gordy. barely make sense in a science fiction novel. Vehicles that That's can exceed the speed Pepin of sound here. without producing any sonic booms. Vehicles that can drop or climb to virtually any altitude in a matter of seconds. Vehicles that can violently change the direction of travel as if inertia was a mere suggestion. None of that should be possible, yet dozens of trained observers claim they witnessed the impossible. The least uncomfortable solution, therefore, is to simply not believe them. Sure, the witnesses are credible, but they're not incontrovertible. Everything from optical illusions to faulty equipment could be used to cast doubt on their one extraordinary ninth case. Vessel in the prime and legend. without any corroborating evidence, except for this nebulous footage, that is not a difficult task. As such, many government officials may not seem concerned because they genuinely believe there is nothing I have to an alien story. About. I'll tell it in a second. Not the one I told last time. Personally, I'm left feeling very Thanks, on the one hand, I find the witness accounts quite compelling. On the other, I find this grainy trilogy of dots in the sky somewhat underwhelming. Agreed. Sure, the videos are fascinating, but they're also far too ambiguous to provide any decisive answers. I highly recommend that you seek out and listen to some of the witness accounts so that you can Favorite judge Favorite monster for truck? I'm not sure. The one that did a front flip. This is very much a developing situation. By the time you watch this video, chances are more information will have been released. Nope. According none. to Elizondo, the Nimitz and Roosevelt encounters are just the tip of the iceberg. Sightings by military personnel are said to be commonplace. It's just that we rarely hear about them. I can only hope that more evidence is released in the near future and that at least one <clears throat> video depicts something inexplicable. Something that is unidentified because it defies explanation, yeah, not because be cool. it's too distant, too small, or otherwise too obscure. No, but something truly extraordinary. That's sweet, That's Buttercup. What I to see. That was a cool video. So, like I said, my dad is super fucking into this alien shit, and I've told this story before. But uh, a long time ago, my mom and dad were friends with a really high-ranking officer in the U.S. military. And the guy was fucking wild. So, I mean, the, the guy's real. Like, I, I even looked into him to make sure that, like, they didn't just get scammed or something. And so the guy, I won't drop his name for obvious reasons, he was like a really high-ranking uh, uh, military guy. He, without... It's hard to, like, explain the story without, like, fucking giving away the guy's info. He... May, he was like the head of a very big air base and when he retired dude got kind of big into the alcohol 
and he would give away like a lot of shit that he probably shouldn't to my parents some of it like standard war shit but then like my dad being as curious as he was about aliens would always bring up like ufo shit and alien shit and i don't know if he was just fucking with my dad but he would always like go down that path he'd be like he'd be like very serious and be talking about like how he has had encounters with ufos and that the government tries to keep it under wraps and that he's seen actual wreckage and shit so ever since that my dad has been super fucking adamant that they are real and that the government keeps them under wraps i again i i think that the family friend was just fucking with him but it is something interesting to think about Thanks to the resub, famous lady, famous ladies man in the prime braid. If he wants to talk about it, I'd fucking love to interview him about it. My my dad has told me that shit constant. Actually, I think he's dead. Is my dad still awake? Let me ask if the guy died. He retired because it was like some he suffered some kind of injury or some shit. I'm texting my dad real quick. Yeah, I started Invincible. It's pretty good. Thanks to the resub amb ambidextrous. Aliens got him. Nah, I, I, he suffered some kind of injury at one of the bases or some shit. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've heard the story, like the full story. Thanks to Tier 1 Viking and the resub rub hub. And the resub perpetual retrograde Jackie in the prime play stuff. Alright, cool. Hold on, he's still awake. I'm gonna call him real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> Give me one second. Thanks to resub God Slayer. Yeah, uh, the guy I was talking about passed away. Would have been really cool to fucking ask him about it, though. Thanks to the resub, Phoenix. I'm